Hello everyone and welcome to JFG tonight. We will be talking about levels of degeneracy that shouldn't even be possible today. Rekieta Allah's children taken after ecstasy-fueled craze at some underwear gay karaoke bar alongside his wife and living girlfriend uh, has been arrested, his children taken away from him due to irresponsible behavior that has built up apparently over the years. Uh, but this is the story of a YouTuber uh, who had everything going for him. Reketala was the news of 2022-23. It was the rising channel. It was a new genre, this whole legal analysis genre. Uh, we, we never had this in my generation of YouTuber, and so... It was the most popular podcast that were live, that were not in the already established uh, YouTube elite. And he couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle the rise to fame and ultimately his psychopathic trait. And this is what happens with leftism. You have no moral pillar. You get this massive amount of money. Not many of these leftist YouTubers can handle that much success. Too much money, too much money to spend, too much glory, too easy. And uh, only people like me will take this and just make a viable future for themselves, for leftists who are impressed at, at, this, at, at this whole uh, grandiosity of it. They will spend all that money on drugs, prostitutes, and end up in jail. Based Saxon says, Dick Masterson, a reaction on his show. The biggest problem was pretty funny. Well, Dick Masterson is always uh, funny and interesting. I loved going there to do some uh, gallows humor as part of the disappearance of Mama JFK's. That was fun. Based Saxon says, when you bring another woman into your home and start doing drugs, things aren't going to get better. Yeah, and people point to the fact that he may be some kind of a Christian, although not uh, <clears throat> maybe not a, a super strongly Christian person, but identifies as some kind of a Christian with six children. Uh, but six children, and apparently he cares so little about them that he was constantly on drugs around them to the point where someone reported him. They say that it's a mandatory report so generally when they say this it's either the police or a hospital staff that felt bound by law to report hey this guy is totally drunk totally on drugs and i have to report now i'm not a fan of these systems of reporting so it's uh it's it's hard to fully enjoy the the pain of this guy due to his own degeneracy, knowing that these are systems of injustice. But this is, in this case, it does seem that he was living a truly degenerate life. He admitted it himself on streams. He was going to these gay bars that his wife, can you imagine this? And he has this whole, uh, you know, alternative engagement ring, like skater, punk, blue band engagement ring. And he's like, he's going with his wife to this gay karaoke bar where they won't let you get in with clothes. I mean, that is just how it is. You need to come in with your underwears. And he's on MDMA and there's two guys trying to fuck him in the ass in front of his wife. Oh, they didn't succeed. They didn't succeed is what he says. I mean, <laughs> if you put yourself... Uh, within uh, within remote distance and any sort of close distance to anal penetration by men, and your your big takeaway is well, they didn't succeed. At least <laughs> you're looking for trouble. Shamrock Sheikh says, hopefully the kids are with family. I shudder to think what happens to them in the foster system. Oh yeah, totally horrible. The the foster system is just wrong but the layer above the foster system which is the the system of social worker lesbians that are going around and deciding what heterosexual families do with their children and judging them for being insufficient insufficiently good parents and doing so on absolutely questionable legal and factual basis that is extremely worrying
Uh, this guy is the story of fame, YouTube, and degeneracy. YouTuber liar Nicholas Roberta Requieta, 42, and his wife Kayla Christine Requieta, 40, both booked this morning on probable cause charges of possession of a controlled substance and possession of a firearm while using a controlled substance. The YouTuber in charge of the legal podcast, Requieta La, which was the rising force in podcast, it was one of the most attended live streams, uh, went very popular during the Johnny Depp trial and then rolled on many other, other success trial. April Imholt, the living girlfriend in some threesome relationship that these people are entertaining was also addicted to drug and also in the circle of people getting arrested. Um, Nick Requieta, apparently, there's reports on Reddit here by Toby Onotobi. Uh, he says during the, uh, no, Baobab 2022, he says, during the last two years, he fell into a massive hedonistic decline fueled by alcohol, sleep medication, and drugs which escalated into more and more unhinged streams. Lowlights include mocking and humiliating a suicidal fan who reached out to him, making jokes about his children being molested, comparing Michelle Obama to an orangutan, calling a black entrepreneur the N-word, justifying people who implied to mock his grandfather's grave and harassed his business, and also humiliating himself by attempting to be a stand-up comedian during his streams. Apparently, his jokes were so unfunny, he was actually receiving super chats that were like, please stop. <laughs> please stop, don't do this kind of joke. It is not funny. You just don't have it. He allegedly cheats on his wife with his ex-friend's wife and his underage children walk in. <clears throat> on his drug slash alcohol binges. He also insulted his fellow churchgoers on stream and shamed their way of worship, singing, while fully admitting going to church so hammered he had to walk out during Easter service. Now, note that he is a trust fund child only attending his congregation so that his religious parents continue to subsidize his lifestyle. Aha! Not always a good place. It's not all good people in church. There are people who are constrained to be there. This guy was going on MDMA in church to collect the trust fund because the trust fund was conditional on the fact that he was living a religious lifestyle. Ah, interesting. All this is just scratching the surface. It becomes really crazy once you consider he was putting on a conservative, family-centered, religious liar man persona beforehand. I mean, look at this guy. Look at my skin tone. I mean, I don't want to brag here. I do have the luck of having genetically basically a baby face. But look at how radiant I am. Compared to this guy. And tell yourself, we're, we're in the same age. He's 42, I'm 40. This guy, man, he changed a lot because I didn't follow him at all. But I remember two, three years ago, this, this guy was as radiant as me. He had as good skin as me. And here you can see the effect of hard drugs and alcohol over so many years. Uh, maybe next time says, what face lotion do you use, Jeff? I use nothing. That is the state of my baby face, preserved by a life on the inside, a life of programming and mathematics. If you do healthy stuff in life, you don't have to, you don't have to do much skin care to be so uh, healthy. Now, look at his face. That is, this guy has aged about 10 years since the last time I saw him, which, which was about two years ago. But it doesn't matter what race you're talking about when, when you go back to the sort of the tribal beginnings of humanity and you go, now, where did racism develop? And you go, oh, that's right. That's because one group of people lived in a like a village and, or like a set of tents or huts or I don't know, just laid out in the grass with sheep and stuff. And then another group of people who look different than them, most notably by skin pigment, 
came and like killed their entire family. And like, well, those people aren't good. But if so people say you had kind of a uh, kind of a right wing persona or conservative persona, but that's for the normies because as far as I'm concerned here, he's justifying anti-white racism. He's saying, you know, racism does make sense against white people because they came into so many huts and killed so many, <laughs> so many hut dwellers that he understands that racism is kind of justified in this case. But if you do that now, right? Like if you live somewhere and you're conditioned by maybe a bad economic demographic or socioeconomic demographic, and you see nothing but crime from one particular demographic and you go, I don't really trust those people. Now it's like, they're like, no, you have to understand that racism is bad and you can't do that. And they're like, but you have to understand that this is where I grew up and this is what I've seen. And they can't meld those two. See, uh, there's much, uh, it, there's much problem in elocution. And that has shown recently uh, up to then, he was producing quality podcasting, quality pronunciation. But I think that over the last two years, he converged toward this, bl bl this blabber of uh, way of speech. It's like he doesn't quite know what to say, and he's speeding up the delivery of his words. Two ideas. Now it's binary. Racism is bad. And if you're racist, you're bad. So uh, we we just pretend that all of this is able to be fixed by like a conscious thought but it's not it's not and so when they're when they're talking about fixing racism that's very leftist trying to find a way to be like oh well the black diaspora needs to be shared amongst you know young black kids so they know that they don't have to be white authors when they grow up or whatever they could just be black authors and by the way he was constantly drinking on stream uh, all the streams i've seen he has strong alcohol or beer in his hand like, well, yeah we got to teach him that I, like i guess by making them read only only books about um you know how much white people hate him or something and so they they created this uh resegregation process in the public school system in the colleges especially and they really want separate times and separate clubs and separate everything and it's amazing to watch because like i thought we did this there's that rosa parks lady who's like buses should be equal to it's like, well, and then they fixed that by like all these women just becoming the size of buses. Then they didn't have to sit anywhere because they're always sitting everywhere. Oh, woman becoming the size of buses. Now that is, <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> that is fucking funny. Uh, we have solved the Rosa Parks situation by having women become the size of buses. <laughs> and so they're always sitting everywhere. <laughs> oh my God. And I think he actually gets a super chat for that joke. The only joke that, that I just got it and I'm laughing at it. But actually, I think he's getting a super chat to warn him that this joke is unacceptable and it's pissing off his fan base. So I don't know. Maybe Rekieta with uh, maybe with enough doses of ecstasy and beer, he was headed toward a JF level of humor that I could appreciate. Uh, but I, I, th that's not the demand on YouTube. They expect very different from this type of humor. So here today he has appeared in front of a judge. So we don't know exactly where he got caught, but we know that he was going to gay bars, that there were attempts to penetrate him in the ass that he was denying, but his, his wife was finding it very funny to have the potential ass fucking of her husband to see. So it was, a, and on top of it, there's the, the alternative girl he was with. So. There was this constant uh, sexual triangles and pentagons that he was engaging in. Uh, then in these bars, there were also lesbians uh, that his wife was bringing him to the lesbians uh, as a kind of birthday reward for him. And he was getting on ecstasy. 
and he was enjoying the sex wa more while on ecstasy. He was talking about all of this openly on streams. Uh, here he is in front of the judge, and he has been arrested and harangued, and they set his bail to $50,000. Candles is going forward. There's a game to play here. Oh, well, somehow it restarted. Uh, let me go back to the timestamp. Uh, where was it? That's it. I totally lost the timestamp because it was a live. And, well, uh, does he appear at any point? I was watching this live. Okay, there he is. Yeah, he can definitely play it the right way, and he knows he knows how to how to. Before we do uh, a couple rules this morning, giving the amount of observers uh, first, uh, you uh, are to turn off your device so you are muted and turn off your video. This is December 16, 1981. Yes, sir. Uh, currently reside at one two two nine one. Okay, let's just uh, censor this part. Okay, your appearance today is based on three counts to a complaint in order for detention. Uh, the record should reflect that Alex Kornahachi appears for the state of Minnesota. Uh, Mr. Rakeda, you are self-representing yourself at this point? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, count one is second degree possession, 25 uh, grams or more of cocaine. 25 grams or more of cocaine. Cocaine or methamphetamine. Or methamphetamine. Uh, this is in violation of Minnesota Statute 152.022, subdivision 2, print A, print 1. The maximum sentence for that count is 25 years in prison and or a $500,000 fine. Count two is possession of ammunition uh, or any firearm with the user of controlled substances. This is a gross misdemeanor, so the maximum sentence is... So having firearms with the cocaine... 364 days in the Candy White County Jail and or a $3,000 fine. Count three, endangerment of a child uh, when presence uh, with a sale or possession of a controlled substance. A so endangerment of his own children, because if you have 25 grams of coke, uh, around children, uh, yes, I would agree that it's a, it's quite dangerous. Uh, you don't know what the children will do if they take it. Uh, what if they take a whole spoon of it and they just try it? I mean, it, it's super dangerous. So those are the three counts that he is accused of. And those are some more clips from his uh, falling down that has happened over the last two years. Talk to I mean, look at his face. This guy is my age. What else? Hi person A did not hire person C. Person A hired person B. Holy shit. It supports Nick's clan. Here's the thing. I'm not a good lawyer. I didn't win because I came up with a novel legal, legal argument. Literally, my clients have good cases. And I go, this person didn't hire that person. They hired someone else. Talked to someone else. Hi, person A did not hire person C. Person A hired person B. Person B quit. Person C sues person A. Person C is not in the company of person B. The court's like, well, why are you there? Like, because these people are working in my house. It should be simple. But why are you there? Why are you in, why are you telling me? I mean, he was still getting in that mental state $200 super chats. I can't even understand what he means, what he's saying. I'm very high IQ. I can process a lot of bullshit. I have no idea what he's talking about here. Why are you fighting this? I don't know. Freedom matters. My rights matter. If you don't fight the government, they get to just say whatever they want. And he was constantly I have no idea drinking what he's talking beer. About. I'm going to be real with you. Constantly drinking. He was totally drunk on that stream. Uh, here, 
he is explaining some of those uh, drug fueled nights that he was spending uh, time in. Again, uh, here's the thing. Uh, Lady Lady Raggeds took me to the uh, karaoke bar and then the underwear bar for my birthday. Right? We had a, we had a fun time. Um, two uh, two lesbians tried to pick us up, and two two gay men tried to have sex with me. I I like I don't know. We had a none of them succeeded, but it was a good fucking time. He does have an enormous nose. I don't know how to interpret this fact, but he does. Have, have fun in your fucking life. How is the sex, Nick? If I'm, am I still sore? Bitch, I already told you I was on MDMA. The sex was fucking fantastic. So here saying that he didn't get caught by the gay guys but the sex was fantastic so was it sex with his wife with the lesbians or was it sex or did he end up having gay sex with the guys or was it sex at the gay bar with his wife i don't know but some sex did occur under mdma If you ever had sex on MDMA, it's a whole different life. Like, it's weird. You don't want to do it every day. You do not want to do it every day. Like, MDMA every day will kill you. What a pathetic man. This man is at the peak YouTube. Like, you could just... you could, He could have stopped his YouTube career and have money forever. He could have done like me, continue chill streams while surfing on the money from the past. But there he is being an absolute degenerate in some tank top. It's, it's the most pathetic thing you can think of. Talking as a 40-year-old adult about mixing MDMA and sex. But uh, it's exciting. Rick Nikita, when are you going to disable locals? This place is cancer. Probably tomorrow. Tech Priest Alex, I don't get the Puritans on Discord. They post real naked chucks, chicks all the time. Hypocr hypocrisies. Embrace your degeneracy. Fap the Fuda and hint tentacle hentai. Embrace your degeneracy. Masturbate to anti porn. Uh, oh, father of five. I thought it, he was father of six, but he would be father of five. Here explaining his position on drinking on stream constantly. It's not a good choice. It's not a bad choice. It is a choice that is neutral. The goodness and the badness is always in your context. If you are not... Moral relativism. What kind of church have you gone to for believing this? This guy is stuck into the absolute nihilism of moral, moral relativism. It's not bad, bro. We can see on your face that it's bad. We can see you're not happy. You're constantly recovering from damage to your physical health by alcohol. You're constantly pursuing those highs, stuck in the downs. It is a very bad choice you've been making. Someone who should be drinking, do not drink. If you're able to drink, enjoy it. If you're able to drink now and not able to drink later, then stop. If you need to take a break, take a break. That's on you. That's on you. Your life is in control. This substance does not control you. Neither does anyone's opinion about any substance. This, ice cream, whatever it is, do what is right for you. And then stop doing it when it's wrong. It's not a good choice. It's not. All right. Well, uh, I defer. But in the end, he ended up in trouble with the law. And we'll see how it develops. I would expect I would expect him that, well, he has a $50,000 bail set, and then it will be years before he gets trial. So my guess is he will be able to pay for that bail, but then he might get in trouble again because a, a rich kid from a rich family like this, trust fund, uh, it's not always the case that an, one interaction with the law will be enough to uh, shut them down. It's very possible that he will be uh, not fixing his life and that he will be going forward with his continued degenerate behavior. 
I mean, no, no matter what happens, uh, he will have trial in a year from now, approximately. And then he's looking at a long jail sentence. Then Simon says, I've been doing cocaine for years. I can quit anytime. Lol. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's what he reveals that he's thinking. Because when he says this substance or any other substance, it's in you. Well, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, it's in you. The reaction is in your brain, but you are damaging your brain. You are habituating your brain to these substances. And in that case, uh, th there was such quantities that he may qualify as a drug seller, uh, especially if he was the provider of drugs for his wife, the provider of drug for his girlfriend. Uh, and we have uh, people are hearing him. Uh, in those uh, in those karaoke bar streams, people have identified his voice at this gay karaoke bar. I won't go into listening to it because the sound is not clear, but people who have been looking through the evidence have uh, located him at this bar back in 2022 at least. Uh, so what he was saying on stream was not bullshit. Well, what is the lesson to keep from all this? Don't do drugs, uh, don't do uh, alcohol even, is not super good for you. If you can uh, use it in very restricted amounts, you will be better off as much as you can avoid. Tillerson says the brain scans from long-term cocaine users is all fucked up, messed up blood flow. Yes, messed up blood flow to decision-making centers of the brain. And really, uh, it, it totally disrupts your intelligence. Raised Fist says, I do cocaine every other year without addiction. I don't judge you for it, but I'm sure your life would be better off if you didn't. Uh, I, I really don't care. But why? 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 Uh, if you can get rid of this cocaine every two year habit, uh, you would be doing better, I'm sure. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!